St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. A good day to those of you joining us here at St. Basil's and to those of you with us throughout the land. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Rosalia Outhager from Regina, Saskatchewan. This Mass is offered for her intentions, for the health and welfare of all her wonderful caregivers at Santa Maria Senior Citizen Home in Regina, Saskatchewan. Because of you, today will be a richer day for so many people across Canada. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Beloved, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourself were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. up against me, yet 
that I will be confident. The Lord is my light and my salvation. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover set me high on a rock. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And yield a harvest through perseverance. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. King Herod heard of the miracles of Jesus, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. <clears throat> and Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias herself came in, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, Ask for the head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. And when the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, this Gospel passage follows uh, what we can call a very um, successful experience on the part of the disciples of Jesus. He had, uh, as you may recall, sent them out on a field trip or on a mission, uh, two by two, uh, to heal, to uh, preach the word, to exercise. And uh, by all accounts, it was a, a very uh, successful uh, venture. And it's at this point in Mark's gospel uh, that we see the story about Herod 
and uh, the beheading of John the Baptist, as we have just proclaimed in this gospel passage. The uh, disciples of uh, Jesus had uh, uh, made Jesus known way up in uh, Galilee, and uh, the word of uh, Jesus and his activity obviously traveled all the way down to Jerusalem. And we're told that the king was afraid, a small statement which uh, says a great deal. Ordinarily, the king, with all his authority and all his power, is uh, hardly afraid of anyone or anything. However, and this is worth uh, a little bit of a look at, why would Herod, the king, be afraid of the good that Jesus and his disciples were doing? And uh, as the story goes, we know that he was uh, caught in a, living in a, a difficult, adulterous situation, uh, being with the wife of his brother. John had called him out on that, and uh, whether that or some other reason, uh, aside from the dance of his, uh, Herodias' uh, daughter, uh, Herod has John beheaded. The question is, you know, was, it, uh, was, he's, was his fear of Jesus uh, a political type of fear that Jesus would be causing trouble in a political nature and that there might be some type of rebellion that uh, Herod would have to deal with. And so did he respond to that or was it perhaps deeper? Was he afraid of Jesus, uh, of John the Baptist, because of the moral um, certitude that John had or the uh, moral uh, comments that uh, John the Baptist had made about Herod himself personally. For whatever reason, we obviously see the difference between the two. John, on the one hand, can easily handle the truth and can, uh, is well equipped with uh, courage in handling the truth, uh, whereby Herod himself um, uh, is uh, stri stricken with fear because of self-preservation. Even though he may have been king and even though he may have been in power, at the same time he is concerned about uh, staying king, king and remaining in power. The uh, adulterous relationship is, um, and why John spoke up against it, is also another question. You know, we could have advised John the Baptist perhaps to uh, say nothing. You know, the baptisms were going well, uh, many people were coming forward, uh, many were uh, asking to be baptized in uh, the River Jordan, and by all means, uh, John was attracting a great deal of followers. We could also have advised him, if we had been there perhaps, to leave Herod alone. Why cause trouble for yourself uh, in uh, trying to cope with this situation, which uh, is dangerous and obviously it was very dangerous for, Her for uh, John the Baptist himself. I think we in our own lives sometimes uh, might want to be cautious in uh, speaking the truth, and uh, whether it be uh, personally with individuals or even in speaking the truth in our own society and in our own culture. The thing about the truth is it really cannot uh, be silenced and they can never be uh, uh, turned off and extinguished. I came across a very interesting little story about the uh, dictator uh, Idi Amin in Africa, in Uganda, who uh, is reportedly to have been personally responsible for the um, killing, the extermination, and the suffering and persecution of between 100,000 and 500,000 people. Uh, and the story goes like this. A visitor was visiting uh, some people, and uh, they were recounting the stories about the persecution of Idi Amin. And uh, as they were recounting the stories, there was a little um, almost like laughter in uh, telling the stories of the persecution. And so she asks her host, 
you know, why is this merriment in uh, telling these stories about uh, Amin? And uh, the answer came, you see, Idi Amin did not know the story. And she asks, what story? He replied, the story about Jesus Christ. Whenever you kill him, he rises again. You cannot kill the body of Christ. And so in the same way, we cannot destroy the truth of uh, Jesus himself and the truth of his words. Yes, uh, the cost of discipleship can be high because millions of Christians throughout the centuries, like John the Baptist, have paid that price. Perhaps in our own way, in our own lives, uh, perhaps we may not be individuals of notoriety, uh, just ordinary Christians who try to live our lives. We, too, uh, can ask God for the courage that we need to uh, profess our faith and to witness to the truth of Jesus Christ. Let us offer now our prayers and our petitions as we turn to our Heavenly Father, who is our help, and offer him these petitions, confident that he will hear and answer them according to his will. For the Church, that the light of Christ shining within us may continue to draw the unbaptized to this newness of life, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that personal integrity and dignity for all may influence the work they do, we pray to the Lord. Let us think and pray for those who are struggling with addictions, that they may be fortified by the gift of courage to fight against temptation, we pray for the Lord. Let us pray for those of you at home who have sent in and called with your requests and your petitions. May the loving God hear you and answer you in his mercy, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially those who fought for the values of freedom and justice, that they may enjoy the eternal freedom won for us by Christ our Lord, we pray to the Lord. Father, you know the challenges we face daily. Be with us as we call out to you in these times of trial, and we pray this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. And pray now, my friends, that this hour's sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the dying? O God, most kind, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, whose will it is that no one who believes and hopes in you should perish. With your boundless mercy, look with kindness on your servants, for true faith and Christian hope commend them to you. Come to them in your saving power, and because of the passion and death of your only Son, be pleased to grant them remission and pardon of all their sins, so that their souls, when they leave this life, cleansed of every stain by the blood of your Son, may enter into life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to Rosalie Out Hager from Regina, Saskatchewan, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you're planning to attend the Daily Mass at St. Basil's Church, it's important that you call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for taping times.